The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you Husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo Leaf Dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted was driving his dog team into Dawson City when he saw Jim Christie and his little daughter Sally at the edge of the trail. Walking! Who are you, Huskies? Hello there, Jim. Hi, Sally. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Can I give you a lift? I'm going your way. Uh, you sure can. It'll help if I don't have to lug this tree home on my shoulder. Put it on the sled. Sally can ride, too. Oh, thanks, Sergeant Preston. This is my Christmas tree. Daddy let me help pick it out. He just cut it down. And it's a fine tree, too. Uh, put it right here, Jim. Uh, there we go. I'm so glad you're back, Sergeant. Now you can stop and see Frisky. He's grown since you left. Oh. <laughs> ah, Sally, Sergeant Preston's probably tired. He won't want to stop and see your puppy. Well, I'd like to see him. Come on, Sally, I'll lift you up on the sled. Thank you. She sure worships that pup you gave her, Sergeant. He's going to have a nice Christmas, too. And hanging a stocking up for him right beside mine. Frisky's a lucky little dog having you take care of him. Well, we all ready? Yep. I'm ready. On King! On you Huskies! Planning to spend Christmas in Dawson, Sergeant? Well, yes, I have my cabin here, and it seems more like home. Ah, this is going to be the best Christmas Mary and Sally and I have ever had. I'm glad to hear that, Jim. You've had some hard luck. But the best Christmas present of all is that I'm getting out of debt at last. Had a fine trapping season. I thought I'd never be able to pay back that money I borrowed from Crane. But I think I have enough furs to do it. Well, that is good news. Crane's a hard man. I borrowed money from him last year. Then I didn't find gold. Took to trapping in desperation. But it sure paid off. I've got enough fox skins in my cabin to pay that debt and have some left over. We'll have to have a real celebration this year. (laughs) What's wrong with King? Whoa! Hi, you huskies! Listen, listen. Did you hear someone call? That's Mary. Come on, Sergeant. Hey, King. Come on, fella. Jim, look. Isn't that smoke by your cabin? It it looks like it. Jim! We're coming, Mary. Oh, Jim. The cabin's on fire. Oh, I'm afraid it's too late. Take care of Sally, Mary. Come on, Sergeant. Oh, Jim, be careful. My furs. I've got to save them. They're all in there. Easy, Jim. We'll do what we can. The whole side of the cabin is burning. That's the side my furs are in. Jim, it's too late. It's going to cave in. Don't go in there. I've got to have them. Jim, come back here. Jim! Oh, stop him, Sergeant. It's too late, Mary. Oh! Daddy! Come on, King. Oh, Sergeant, Jim's going to get Just inside, side caved in. I'll get him. Jim, where are you? Over here. Help! I'm a car. I'll lift this beam off. There. I'll get your arm around my neck. All right. All right. Well, there we are. You all right, Jim? Oh, thank heaven you got him out of there. My, my leg. Oh, Daddy, yeah. you're hurt. I'll get the dogs in the sled. Look, Sergeant. King brought Frisky out of the cabin. Good work, boy. I didn't see him. King came after me. Frisky, are you all right? Oh, thank you, King, for saving him. Jim, you're fought. He's quite badly hurt, Mary. You'd all better come over to my cabin. All the furs destroyed. I can't pay Crane. Jed Crane was the wealthiest man in Dawson. He sat alone in his office that evening, and a frown deepened the wrinkles between his cold blue eyes as he added a column of figures. Three, seven, twelve. Hear me, hear me. Can I see you a minute, Crane? What do you want, Jake? Hey, just heard some news I thought might interest you. Yep. Jim Christie's cabin burned down this afternoon. Jim Christie? What happened to them furs? All of them burned. Nothing left at all. 
He said he intended to give them to you. They're full of rotten luck. Uh, we're sending after them tomorrow. You sure this ain't a trick? Maybe he hit him somewhere and started the cabin to fire himself. Oh, no, they was in there, all right. Jim got hurt trying to get him out. Yeah. I'll have to wait another year till he pays me what he owes me. I was sure a fool to take a chance on him. <laughs> it's kind of hard on his family, just before Christmas and all. They'll live through it. Boys was talking about taking up a collection for him. Well, don't come to me for anything. It's present enough as far as I'm concerned not getting my money. This Christmas business is a lot of sentimental bosh anyway. Well, it's just for the kid. Nobody cared about my Christmas when I was a kid. It's just another day. Another day in a lousy orphanage. <laughs> You mean you never got any presents? Presents? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yep, I did get a present once. Yeah? It was Christmas time. Little girl visited the orphanage with her poor mom. We thought they were looking for a kid to adopt. Well. Out of a clear sky, she came up to me and handed me a toy dog she was carrying and said... Merry Christmas. For your sake. <laughs> it was the first prisoner I ever got. I cried over the thing in bed that night. Carried it around under my shirt for a week. And I waited and, and hoped. Well, they didn't adopt a kid. My, my. They never came back. Then one day I threw the dog away. As far as I could throw it. And I always hated Christmas. Oh, shucks. <laughs> well, you've made up for a change. Well, she did. By being as hard on everybody as he was hard on me. It's the only way. Well, the boys was all talking about giving something for the kids' sake. Of course, you now, if they was all to give enough, say, each give a gold nugget. Yeah, they could start Jim up in business again. <laughs> say, maybe they would be fools enough to... It might be worth a try. What are you talking about? Vic, I'll start the ball rolling. Enough nuggets to trim the tree around the top. I'll give the first nugget, a big one, the size of my thumbnail. Of course, Crane, you ain't thinking that maybe you'll get your money if uh, Jim gets enough nuggets to pay you. <laughs> I never give it a thought. Uh -huh. That's Vic, here's a chance for you. If you ballyhoo this thing right and Jim does get enough to pay me... I'll give you 10%. Hmm. It don't seem quite right somehow. Of course it's right. Otherwise, he's going to have a big debt hanging over his head. Might take a year to pay off. Oh, it'll take more than that. He won't be able to work for a long time with one foot crushed. Well, if you collect enough, he'll have something to live on, maybe. After he pays me. Tell everybody I thought of it. Enough nuggets to trim the Christmas tree. And I'm starting it by giving the biggest nugget of all. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Sergeant. Well, Jim, you're up. I have good news for you. Good news? I can't tell you all about it. It's a surprise. But everything's going to be all right. What do you mean? If you weren't so blue about everything, I wouldn't even give you a hint. But there's a chance that you're going to have as fine a Christmas as you planned before the fire. What? I'll tell you this much. Jed Crane's a fine man, after all. I guess we were all wrong about him. Jed Crane. You mean Jed Crane is bothering about our Christmas? He wants you to have a better Christmas than you've ever had before. He's the bottom of everything. I'm just as surprised as you are. Come in, come in. Mr. Crane? Yes. Who are you? I, I'm Sally Christie. Oh, sit down, sit down. I, I came here to, well, Sergeant Preston told me about the big surprise you planned for Daddy. Oh, he did. And I thought it would be nice if you'd be there when he got it, Christmas Eve. Uh, well, I don't think I, I'm afraid I'll be busy. You mean you'll be trimming your tree or something? No, I, I, I don't believe in him. What? Didn't your family... Let's not talk about it. But you'll believe in them if you come over and see mine. Oh, please come, Mr. Crane. 
Just Sergeant Preston and Daddy and Mom and I will be there. I, uh, I don't like Christmas. Uh, Maybe that's because you're, well, you're all alone. Maybe if you can... All right, all right, I'll come. Run along now, I'm busy. The soft light of the candles on the Christmas tree was reflected in the nuggets that hung like drops of gold from its branches. Sally smiled as she looked at the happy face of her father, and Mary and Sergeant Preston lifted his chair near the tree. Then she noticed Jed Crane off in the corner by himself. His wasn't a happy face. His eyes had almost a desperate look, and Sally suddenly felt sorry for the old man. She left the others and went to him quietly. Mr. Crane. Hey. Yes? Yeah. Could, could I sit on your knee? Well, well sure. <laughs> There you are. Isn't it a wonderful Christmas tree? It's, uh, yep, awful good, Em. Doesn't it make you believe in Christmas just a little? I guess so, a little. You've been so good to us. Daddy's so happy again. No child, I ain't. Sergeant Preston said you started everything. Mama says my stockings will be full of presents in the morning. I'll bet that's a fine feeling, the... Find a stocking full of presents on Christmas morning. Did you like it when you were a little boy? I, I don't know. Let's let's not talk about it. Uh, Mr. Crane, I, I want to do something. I want to give you a Christmas present. <laughs> Me? Oh, no, no. The I... trouble is, everything we had was burned except... Well, the only thing I have to give is Frisky. You mean you... Want to give me your pup? He's he's really a wonderful dog. I know you'll love him, and and maybe you'll let me come over and play with him once in a while. But, uh, Shelly, he, he's all you got. It isn't because I don't love him. I do. But, but it's Christmas, and you just got to have a present. Shelly, thank you, my dear. Merry Christmas, Mr. Crane. Shelly, uh, Shelly, wait a minute. Uh, don't go, I... I, I have a better idea. You know, if there's another present I'd rather have. Another present? But I... I, I... wish you'd... Well, maybe this sounds kind of funny, but... I wish you'd kind of adopt me for a, for a sort of uncle. Adopt you? Why, that'd be wonderful. I haven't any uncles, and, and you belong to our family. Yep, yep, I'd, I'd belong... Of course I'll adopt you, Uncle Jack. You, you keep frisky and, and bring me over to my house once in a while. And someday I'll tell you a story about a little boy and, and another little girl and a dog, a toy dog. But hey, that, uh, that story ended different. He wasn't adopted. What are you and... talking about? I just adopted Mr. Crane. He's, he's my Uncle Jack. He... Your Uncle Jed? Oh, fine, Sally. Well, welcome to the family, Uncle Jed. If Jimmy, he and his house, that money you owe me is all in the family, we're going to forget all about it. Why, why, I don't know what to say. Didn't I tell you, Jim? Isn't this the best Christmas you ever had? <laughs> Even King and Frisky think so. I was impressed in that the first time that dog of yours ever wagged his tail, ma'am. Well, he's just trying to say what we all want to say. Merry Christmas, Uncle Jed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. You hold it.